Hello everybody, this is the video where I help Matt figure out what's wrong with his collision detection and other people are welcome to watch in Allegro 5. Uh, basically, I uh, have a, a student named Matt who's working through some code and I was going to write an email, but uh, I hate typing emails, so I figured I'd make a video where I point out uh, some different things with the code and then I figured, well, if I'm going to bother recording it, I might as well record it so that I can throw it up on my website and let everyone else see it. So, uh, well, let's get to it. Before we begin, I'm not going to go through all of the code. Uh, instead, I'm just going to pay attention to two functions here, this update ball and collide ball functions. Uh, I want to point out before we start, this is uh, some simple code. We're not dealing with classes or anything like that. We're just dealing entirely with structs and with uh, with uh, functions. I know classes would be better and, and yada yada, so if you're going to comment or write me an email saying I really should use classes, yeah, I, I know. Uh, and uh, this is just basically for learning. Let's go ahead and run this see what we've got here. Uh, this real simple uh, breakout style game uh, where I, I, I run it and uh, you know we just have the ball bounce around and destroy other blocks. We're having some issues, uh, or the students having some issues with accurate collision detection and resolution. As you can see there, it sort of uh, just kind of goes, kind of goes wild uh, at certain times with the uh, with when it detects a collision. You can notice here after a few more blocks, this ball is just going to go crazy. Yep, there we go. Uh, now the ball is just just going nuts with speed, and it wasn't a gradual increase, which is like all of a sudden things just went insane. Um, I'm not going to bother popping in this extra ball power up that I've got. Um, just hoping for one more good example of it going nuts here. Oh, yeah, well, that really went nuts. Okay, so let's look at what we've got. First off, right off the bat, I noticed some things uh, I don't really like with this code. Uh, the first is inside our update ball function here. Uh, by the way, update ball function is going to be moving the ball, and the collide ball function is going to handle a lot of our collision. Um, I see here, if ball live, if ball live, if ball live or if ball not live. Um, so we can extract that all out. Also, I see that we're drawing text in an update function. That is a big no-no. This does not go here. This goes down in a render section. So, goodbye. We don't want that here. That's, that's a no-go. So now we have just two blocks to say if ball live, if ball live. So why not just say if uh, not, oops, not ball live, return. There we go. And now we don't have to test to see if the ball is live here or here. We can simply do, do what we need to do. Also, we have this here. This block of code is what's causing the ball to go absolutely insane um, as far as speed goes. Let me reduce that in there. Um, since this is happening in an update, uh, if any at any time, you know, you've hit a, a uh, you know, a, a, uh, oh, oh, geez, uh, something easy, evenly divisible by 10, a number evenly divisible by 10, uh, but you're not currently hitting a block, uh, this will increase every time, right? So let's say this is going to update 60 times a second. Let's say it takes half a second from when I hit my 10th block to when I hit my 11th block. That means this code is going to run 30 times increasing my speed, um, which is why the ball just goes absolutely nuts. I'm not a big fan of this being here. This should really go in uh, the collision, since it's a one-time thing. It's, pow, if we collided, check, and then increase speed. So I'm going to actually just comment that out for now, and we'll look at that here in a second. Uh, and this looks fine. This is fine here. Uh, and one other thing. One thing that should always be in your update code and not anywhere else, we have this collide ball, which determines collision. Um, we are checking our bounds in collide ball. That's also a big, not really a big no-no, but it's just not the place for it. It's not where we want that. Um, so we are going to put uh, that detection somewhere else. I also see that uh, I'm doing something like uh, uh, hard coding values. Not me. I didn't write this code, but uh, hard coded values. Um, you also that's big no-no. Uh, you you don't hard code values like that, like a bound at 385. Use a variable so it's easier to fix. So. Uh, Basically, yeah, we just we, we, we don't want to see that. Um, it's just much better to uh, to not do something like that. Okay, so what I can do is I can take this code here. 
I'm just going to go ahead and grab all this code and I'm going to cut it out of there because we do not want uh, uh, balance checking inside our collide function. We want it inside our update function. All right. Um, okay. I'm noticing here now that collide ball read in a sound clip, two sound clips for when uh, collision occurred uh, with the, the ends there. So I'm actually going to smooth this out and put it up here. We actually don't need that font anymore. So I'll just drop that there because uh, the font does not go there. Um, and of course, when I go to run this, it's going to break on me for a second there. So um, you'll just have to bear with me. Actually, let me just run it now and see where it breaks. Go ahead and get it fixed. So oh, apparently, I still need instance there. So I'll, I'll put it back. We'll have it in both spots. No biggie. Of course, we're going to. Oh, getting an error with update ball. Let me figure out where we update that. Right here, update ball is reading in a font. I don't want it to read a font. I want it to read uh, paddle instance, I believe is what I want there. Great. And we'll just go ahead and test this. Oh, because I'm still having an issue because I forgot to come up here to my header. And let's find update ball is still reading a font. I want it to read a font, I want it to read Allegro sample instance. Awesome. Now we'll run it again, and uh, our, our ball collision isn't fixed, I'm just ensuring that my balance checking works. All right. Um, so good, okay, great. Sounds playing, balance checking works, fantastic. Let me come back to my update ball function. So my update ball looks pretty solid right now, we're good. Uh, this will get removed here in a bit. And let's look at my collide ball. So once again, we have this if ball live and, uh, and all that stuff. But if you think about it, we can't collide if the ball is not live. So I'm going to say if not ball dot live return. Basically, we don't want to do any of this junk if the uh, the, the ball isn't live. Um, and then we have this statement here, which is kind of bounds checking, kind of not. Uh, I left this inside the collide ball function because we deal directly with a paddle and I don't have to deal with passing a paddle in up here. So we deal directly with a paddle, uh, which is the player, the number of lives. Um, and it, it's kind of like it, it, a, a game over effect, so I left it in the collide. You know, you can theoretically put it in the update because it is bounds checking, but since it's more uh, game rule based instead of just generic bouncing, uh, I left it here. So, so that's, that's that. Alright, and so we have what well, we're bouncing off the paddle. Um, this works so well. Um, one thing I don't like is if the ball hits the side of the paddle, it acts a little funky. Um, but I'm not really interested right now in, in nitpicking all of that. Just trying to make this, you know, a short, informative video. Here. One thing I did notice uh, is basically, if we've collided with a paddle, we know we haven't collided uh, with uh, any blocks because no blocks are near the paddle. So to save myself 40 loops every single cycle, I'm going to say else and then do the rest of my collision detection. The reason I do that is basically if I have collided with a paddle, I can't collide with blocks um, and so I only check only check these if I haven't collided with my, with my paddle. Um, and that should save myself some iterations there. Okay, finally, we're doing a lot of teleporting around. Uh, I can see here Matt's trying to do some, some complicated uh, Basically, uh, they collide, move, and then adjust uh, directions and stuff like that. And you know that's a very good way of doing it, very accurate. But it's just not working out for him in code. Um, so instead of, of of beating this and, and making it work and stuff like that, uh, let's just look at a simpler model. Um, generally, the ball is moving fast enough that it, it won't be a big deal. Anyway, we will hardly ever notice um, slight inconsistency. So I'm just going to actually uh, remove all of this here. This if statement tells me we have a collision. Okay, so I know that anything in two, between these two blocks, uh, we will be inside of a collision. We've had a collision, and we just need to determine how to handle that. So what we can do um, is we can do all sorts of comparisons for top and bottom, left and right, and stuff like that, and that will get us the most accurate and realistic collision detection, hands down. Uh, for something like this. Uh, it's important to note right now that the ball is uh, bounding box. 
are not uh, distance based, they're radial collision. Um, so we're using two rectangles, even though the ball is a circle, we're still using two rectangles. Um, so I can simply say something like this. I can say, if ball.x is less than brick sub i dot x, okay? So that means the ball is to the left of the brick. If that happens, I can say ball dot direction x equals the absolute value of ball dot direction x times negative 1. Okay, so let's talk about what I've done here. Basically, I've said, hey, if the ball is to the left of the brick, okay, the ball is to the left of the brick, we're bouncing it in the negative 1 direction. Now, the reason I didn't just flip the direction x is to prevent, like, what happens if I have multiple collisions or something like that, and the x value gets flipped one way and flipped back another way, or, uh, or what if it's already negative, that makes it positive, you know, just all these little weird nuances that can potentially happen. In a most accurate system, I'd want to account for all of those. But like I said, we're going to go more simple with this one. So I'm simply going to say, all right, regardless of what the direction currently is, that's why I'm doing absolute value. If it's positive, it stays positive. If it's negative, it becomes positive, all right? Regardless of what the value is, I'm going to take what it currently is, and I'm going to make it negative 1. Now you're going to ask yourself, why, oh why, do I bother doing this and why not just assign it as negative 1? Because our direction is either 1 or negative 1. Two reasons. One, uh, because I am assuming this is 1 or negative 1. Okay? I haven't read all of this code. Okay? Uh, so my assumption <laughs> is that it's 1 or negative 1. But who knows? Maybe something else could be getting done in this code that might make a direction 2 or 3 and it's, you know, it's multiplying or, or whatever. Right? So uh, I, I don't want to deviate too much uh, from the way it's done. Um, and I guess I said I had two reasons and it sounds pretty much like that's one reason, and that's probably my only reason. Basically, I just don't want to deviate too much from the way the code is already written, uh, just in case. You know, uh, there's no sense in, in creating more bugs by by you know moving stuff around too much. So, okay. So, uh, basically, uh, if I collide on the left, I'm going to start moving in the, the, the negative direction. Uh, I don't need to check to see if I collided on the right because it's an either-or relationship. I'm either on the left or the right. I might be dead center, very rarely, and in that case. I, I don't care. I'll just, you know, I'll just bounce uh, the opposite direction. That one pixel is not really going to be noticeable. Um, and so in this case, I'm just going to bounce uh, in the positive direction. So just the absolute value there. All right. And then for the y's, I'm, it's, it's going to be exactly the same. So I'm just going to go, bam, like that. And I'm just going to change this to x and to x. Or, or I'm sorry, I said x. I typed y. That's what I meant. Okay, and finally we had where when collision would occur, we decrement the brick count and we play a sound. But since we know, and that was under each of the if statements, since I know that I've had a collision, I can just drop in like that. Um, just one time instead of four times. Um, so there we go. One last thing is we still have this uh, total bricks. And uh, so what I want to do is I want to take this code here, this clean that up a little bit. If we have a collision, okay, um, uh, let me tab this out. So if we have collision, all right, no, go with that. All right, so if we have collision uh, and total bricks uh, is less than or equal to 40, and uh, or less than 40 and total bricks, uh, modulus 10 equal, double equals zero. We're going to increase the ball's velocity, uh, we'll say, by one and one. Let's try that. Let's give that a whirl. Okay, so we're back here, and now we'll run this. And one thing we're going to notice is our collision detection is not going to be 100% accurate. You're going to see uh, basically what I like to call the ball bouncing on the screen, like you just saw there, where it should theoretically have bounced uh, in a different direction. Than it did, just like that right there. Should have bounced in a different direction. Should have kept going. Or I'm sorry, it should have kept going the way it was going, but instead it went back upon itself. Um, basically, I call that arc-based collision detection, assuming uh, these blocks aren't actually blocks, but uh, are instead uh, curved. And I know that was really fast right there, and it looked like I mean, uh, ooh, that wasn't good. I got clipped inside my my, my uh, side there. Um, oh, I lost what my train of thought there. Um, 
arc-based collision detection, so it, it assumes that if you hit on the near side, you're actually going to bounce back upon yourself. If you hit on the far side, you're going to bounce like you would expect to. Um, that's the easiest to implement. It's also the, uh, uh, the more challenging as far as gameplay, because the ball might seem like it's bouncing a little bit more randomly, and this is a breakout game. It's a game, you know, so most be challenging. Um, you can make this more of a flat-based collision detection more accurate uh, by instead of simply just bouncing these, bouncing them once you determine the left or the right side, or by determining horizontal collision or vertical collision, which you can do by simply taking, like say it's x values, the x value of the ball minus the x value of the brick, uh, absolutely valuing that and checking against some threshold, and you'll determine if it's if it's a vertical collision or not. Um, at the end of the me just playing that, we saw the ball get stuck on the right hand side. Um, I know why it did that. Let's go ahead and fix that. The reason uh, that it got stuck uh, is because they're not using a system like this with the absolute value. See how I'm doing that? Um, to prevent what we just saw where the ball got stuck inside the side there. So let's go ahead and fix that. So um, I'm basically going to take this code. And I just copied and pasted it before. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, instead of copying and pasting it, I'm going to uh, modify it uh, substantially. So what I'm going to say is uh, basically if uh, the ball.x is less than or equal to zero. So I get from now looking at the screen, ball.x is less than or equal to zero. I am then going to say uh, ball.x equals zero, and then I'm going to say ball dot, uh, direction x is going to equal the absolute value uh, of ball.directionx. All right, because we want to bounce in the right direction, and then we are going to play the sample instance like so. And I actually have this typed out in a different screen, so I'm actually just going to copy it and paste it. It's going to look like that. I have my little note here. Don't hard code. Um, so if else, if the uh, the ball is greater than the one edge, we're just going to set it equal to the one edge and bounce. Uh, and same with the 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 top of the screen. So uh, if I run this now. Uh, we'll see, uh, like I said, we're still using that arc-based kind of collision. It's what I call it. It's probably not what it's actually called. Um, and we will see that uh, while you're not going to have 100% accurate collision, okay, you're just not, um, the fact of the matter is, is it's effective. It works. Um, oh, <laughs> even on easy mode, I'm not very good. Let me play it a little bit. It's actually easier to play on hard mode because the ball moves a bit faster. But... Uh, We'll see that our, our collision is is acceptable. It's not super great, um, but it, it's functional. I would say maybe 10 more lines of code, and I can have this more of a flat-based, highly accurate uh, collision detection. Uh, but I'm not going to bother getting into that in this video. Uh, that looked like it was a lot, but still accurate based on the rules we dictated for collision detection. Now that ball's really going. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, oh, I hate it when that happens. Ooh, geez. Okay, so there we go. Anyway, well, I've proven that I'm not very good at breakout. Um, this video has gone a lot longer than I wanted. I'm glad I didn't have to type that all out in email. Um, so there you go. Things are a little bit neater, um, better organized. Um, we've separated some of our collision stuff out, uh, made our update a little bit better. Uh, I don't, ha I didn't remove that or put place that that text rendering. Um, that just goes that's somewhere. I don't know. I haven't really looked at the rest of the code. But, uh, but that should, uh, that should uh, do it. Um, so basically, yeah, uh, everything's a little bit neater. And while we're not using classes, I realize, you know, we're just using structs and functions. You know, we're making it work. And everything is, uh, is looking okay. So uh, thanks for watching.